How's it going? Are you ready for some more Neverwinter Nights 2? We've got a couple requests for the last official campaign, The Mysteries of Westgate. So I figured, let's give it a shot. I haven't played this one. I do have it though. Downloaded it uh, a couple months ago. So this will kind of be a blind LP. I did have a suggestion on a character to create, so I went to nwn2db.com and I got the one shot, one kill build. Because the request was for an arcane archer type character. And you have to be an elf to be an arcane archer, so that's what we're gonna do. So let's create us a character. Of course, it has to be an elf. We're not going to do a half elf. We're going to go according to this build. Where I'm going to take some liberties is in the appearance. So I'm going to choose a female because I got this hair pack from the same website. Actually, no, I think it was NWN2 Vault or something like that where I downloaded a hair pack for girls. Because admitted, I mean, girls just have better hair than men. So I do want the moon elf to have kind of regular looking skin. I mean, no offense to like blue skin people, but I just want her to look like, I don't know, pretty much how elves are supposed to look. Besides the draw, of course. Now, I really don't see a good head. I only see like one okay one. I think it was the first one. It's that one. Yeah, we'll just go with that one. Now, what type of skin tone? Lighter or darker? And then I think we'll go with the blue eyes. See, the moon elf is a blue to a grayish color scheme. So we're kind of stuck along those lines. I mean, we can go to green with the eye color, but that's about it. In fact, I think the default eye color is green. See, I'm not really too into the blue hair. I mean, I, I kind of like it for its punk rockish look. You know, but I, I do want to see what other hairstyles we can pick and maybe we can find a better one. I mean, we can go to white if we want to. Make her have, like, drow-type hair. Or just a really old lady. I mean, elves, by nature, are really old. They just don't look it. They don't wrinkle up. Well, maybe when they get really, really old, they do, but... Like, when you start, you're like 120, around there. See, I like all these hairstyles that... were in this pack. Unfortunately, I think they screwed up. The hair accessory and the hair highlights, so now the hair accessory color actually colors the hair more than the hair color itself. It's kind of weird. And some of these hairstyles I don't think are even compatible with what we're doing because I think the hair just like goes through the clothing and it looks weird. See, I mean we could give it like a darker color or a lighter color. But I think the hair highlight would color the hair accessory and vice versa. They got it really mixed up. Well, maybe not in this one. But the flower is colored by the hair highlight, which is kind of strange. I mean, whoever heard of a gray flower? Okay, so those two hairstyles are almost the same. It's just one short and one's long. Now, this is a pretty good one. I kind of like this one, actually. This one, the, the colors are all screwed up. This is the one where the hair accessory is actually coloring the hair more than the color. So if we went with purple, it would do this and it would be really shiny. I don't know, what's the difference between these two? One of them has like a Princess Leah type hair coil on the side or something like that. The other one doesn't. That's another good one. I really like this one for some reason. I don't know, it just makes her look more like the elves in 
The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. This one's a pretty good one, too. I don't know. As you remember, this is Noretiel's hairstyle that we chose in the last campaign. I mean, we could probably make it work again, but... I do want to mix it up a little bit. Here's another good one. This is like anime-ish, this type of hair. What's the difference? I mean, some of these hairstyles, they're the same and they have like slight differences between each other. You just have to really pay attention, you know, hocus focus type style, yeah. I don't know if we can color this clip a different color or not. I mean, I think it's cool that they did put something like that clip in there. But, I mean, where did they get plastic, honestly, or a spring? I mean, I'm sure that they probably did have them back when this is supposed to take place. Well, maybe not plastic, but springs, yes. See, here's an okay one. Although, it does go through the back of the clothing, so I don't think we're going to use it. Yeah, this one's pretty good. You got to give credit to the person who came up with these hairstyles and put them in this pack. I think it was a French guy. That would explain why they're so stylish. And that one is has a layered look to it. I'm not too impressed with that one. That one's okay. Makes her look like a kung fu warrior or something. I don't know about this one. She's like wearing a bonnet. Gotta dig the pigtails, though. And I think we're back to the default hairstyles. So I think I'm gonna go with that straight hair look. There it is. And if you choose white, it actually is not white, it's blonde. And I actually really like this color. And I think we're gonna go with this one. It doesn't seem like the hair highlight or the hair accessory colors it, but the hair color will change it to a different color blonde, so it'll be like a bluish blonde. But if we go white, it'll be a straight blonde. Oh yeah, the hair accessory does color that jewel thing that she's wearing. So we are going to, I guess, just stick with red. Yeah, see, so it could go from a dirty blonde to straight up blonde. And we're going to just do straight up blonde. And I guess she'll have kind of grayish eyebrows. I don't want to have it, like, blue. I mean, we could have it green. Actually, I think green would be better, considering that she's an elf. You know, elves more in tune with nature. Although, she is not a wild elf. She's a moon elf. And then we're going to do rogue. That's the first level. And then we do chaotic good. The god is, of course, Corlin Laurentian. I know I butchered that translation or pronunciation, whatever you call it. Okay, so our stats are going to be strength 12, dex 20, con 12, intelligence 14. And we're going to leave wisdom and charisma at 8. Which is kind of unfortunate because that's going to give us a penalty to our will saves and to a bunch of our other skill checks like diplomacy and use magic device. Oh yeah, we're also going to pick wild child, which gives a couple bonuses to, I think it's survival, move silently, hide, you know, a bunch of things that we're going to need. So for skills, it calls for diplomacy, disable device, hide, lore. Move silently, open log. Search, sleight of hand. It's kind of odd. I think we're going to be doing sleight of hand on everybody. And tumble and use magic device. It'll be like our original campaign in Master of the Betrayer character, Captain Savaho, where he was doing sleight of hand on everybody. And then we choose point blank shot as the first level feat. We don't pick any background feats. I guess it doesn't really call for it. And now it's time to pick a name and a voice. Get him! Kick some ass! That's okay. Think you can take me? Think again! Bring it on! Get ready to be beaten by a girl! Yeah, let's see what some of these other ones have to say. 
No time for talking. Let's get to the action. Fight, fight, fight! Blood makes the grass grow! Take that, and that, and that one too! Maybe if she was a halfling. Nah. To arms, to battle! Feel my sting! I will not be defeated! Okay. Your blood shall spill! Uh, I don't know. What about this one? Time to finish this. Don't make this too easy for me. One mistake, and you're mine. I will destroy you. Keep me in the fight. Heal my wounds. I think that's a winner. Rally to me. You know what? Let's check one more before we choose that one. At the enemy! A two victory! I will win the day! Bring it on! Mm. I don't I think healing. so. At my side. Aid me here. I see the enemy. Heed what I say. No. To the fight! Give new quarter! There is nothing for you here! Back no. with you! You are not worthy! Bad accent. Okay, that one. And now we are going to randomly choose a name because... Unfortunately, I did not think of one beforehand. But, they do have these random name generators, which are kind of useful. So I think we'll go with that first one, Ania. Unfortunately, with the last name, it's either a really simple one-syllable name or one that I can't even pronounce, and there's no in-between. Oh, jeez. Can't we get a regular last name? <laughs> Juicia. Ah, uh, actually, I should have kept that one. No. I'm not seeing any of that I like. Really. I mean, I don't really know a lot of elven female names or last names, so. Zelo. I don't think so. Velo. Man, is this all that there is? Jesus Christ. What well, would be the female equivalent of Jesus Christ? Jesse Christie? Oh, Freja. That's a good one. Would it be Freja or Freya? I think we'll just say Freya. Alright, so Ania is a one shot. One kill. What else should I put? Rogue. Arcane Archer. And she is going to have one level of Wizard and Shadow Dancer. Alright, let's do this. So if you're ready, let's play Mysteries of Westgate. And we'll watch the intro movie. It was in the depths of some unnamed dungeon that you found the mask. Something about it demanded your attention. Only after you attempted to rid yourself of it, did you learn that the mask refused to be discarded. The nightmares began to plague you shortly afterwards. Unimaginable horrors awaited you whenever your eyes closed, turning sleep into sweat-filled torture. In desperation, you sought advice from a sage of Cormier, who confirmed that the mask had its origins with a mysterious organization known as the Night Masks. The old man urged caution as you caught passage on the next ship to Westgate.
in the fog like some predatory beast waiting for unsuspecting prey. Aye, I see her. Go wake our passenger. Aye, Captain. What's with the standard deaf movie? Up on your feet, stranger. It's time to wake up. There's still a fair way to go until we reach our destination. And the captain needs a few questions answered before he decides whether to take you any further. Come on, get up! Why is everything so hazy? Can't this wait? I'm still half asleep. The captain's had some interesting reports come in. It seems you've been sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. We don't like those who poke around on our business. Know what we do with bilge rats if we catch them? Snap their necks and toss them overboard. Um... Keep speaking to me like that, and you'll be the one going over the side. Don't think your god will protect you here. Threaten one of us, and you make an enemy of the entire organization. What are you talking about? I didn't mention anything about a god. Creed saw you snooping around the docks last night. He ain't the brightest member of the court, but his eyes pierced the night like the white velvety flesh of a maiden's neck. You ain't getting away. Not this time. Creed? Who's that? The docks last night? We've been on this ship together for days. First mate doesn't seem to be hearing a word you say. His face takes on a strange, feverish look. Something is very wrong. That's not good. I warned you. You wouldn't listen. Very well. Come closer. Take a long look. It's what you came here for, isn't it? And already we're gonna die. Wake up! Wake up! You're yelling fit to wake the dead, and this close to a city like Westgate, that ain't a sight I'd want to see. Oh, it must be the mask that's causing that dream. Another bad dream, eh? The motion of the sea can do that to some folks. Luckily for you, the sea serpent is just pulling into harbor. We're there, Nia, and right on schedule. We'll be debarking shortly. Westgate awaits. The sea serpent? Finest merchant ship this side of the dragon mare. The pirates that haunt the Lake of Dragons would love to get their hands on her bounty, but this ship can outrun anything short of a sea serpent itself once the wind is behind her. What well, can you tell me about this mask? You don't want to go thrusting that in people's faces. It's a domino mask. That means it's connected to the night masks. I don't know how it came into your possession. But if there's one thing in the city you don't want to do, it's draw the attention of those villains. Tell me more about the night masks. Please. The night masks are the assassins, thieves, and lowlifes that rule Westgate's dark underbelly. Some say they even hold influence in one or more of the ruling noble houses. I don't like to speculate. Steer well clear of them is my advice. All right, let me ask you about something else. Sure, mate, but you'll have to make it quick. I need to get the cargo secured. The harbor loop ain't the safest place in the city. All right, tell me a little about the city. Oh, Westgate. They say that this is the city where anything goes and everything has a price. And that's pretty much the truth. It's the most powerful city on the Dragon Coast and the most ruthless. My advice is to watch your back at all times. Or get someone to do it for you. Okay, I think we asked him everything we can. I'm ready to depart. Before you go, I better bring you up to speed on events in the city. You haven't picked a good time to arrive in Westgate, Traveler. There's gang warfare on the streets. Apparently the Night Masks have got themselves some competition. Oh, really? This new group calls itself the Ebon Claws. So far, they seem to be giving a pretty good account of themselves. 
Most of the violence takes place after nightfall, but that isn't always the case, so keep your wits about you. And we're gonna have to wait before we can go to exploration mode. The priest, Obid Teltis, has declared that his church is going to clean up the city. The Lathanderites lack the numbers to do lack the numbers to do little except stir up a volatile situation, but Obid might have some work if you're in need of gold. The Morning Star Haven is in the arena district. I need to go and begin unloading cargo. Remember to collect all your belongings from your chest before you depart, lass, as the sea serpent won't be sticking around for long. Your friend, Rinara, is waiting for you above decks. Farewell, mate. Do you wish to manually level up or, or to be leveled up automatically according to your package? Oh, no, we're doing this manually. Alright, so we got 28,000 XP. Now, I don't feel like doing the math to see how many levels that gives us, so... Let's just see how far this can take us. So, let's level up. The next level that we're going to take is Wizard, according to this. Alright, that'll give us four hit points. And we get four skills, but it says here it doesn't have any recommendations. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't think any... Oh, Lore. Lore seems to be the only skill that corresponds with the Rogue. So I think we'll just dump all four of these into Spellcraft. It's always useful to have ranks in that. I mean, if we put ranks in anything else, it would cost us two ranks to bump up one skill point. And it says here that we're going to be a general wizard. We're not going to specialize in anything. Which I kind of agree with. Unfortunately, we're not going to be taking any more wizard levels than this. So we won't have anything past level 1 spells. Well, what's the use in that? Well, let's see what we can get. We can get 5 spells, so it says True Strike is one of the things we should be taking. We have all the cantrips. Of course, you can't really call yourself a wizard unless you know every cantrip. So we got 4 left. Now I'm thinking maybe I should do like Mage Armor and Shield. Those are some of the more useful spells. Yeah, we'll do Shield for sure. Because if you don't use a Shield, you can get a Shield bonus when you cast it. True Strike because we are going to be shooting a bow most of the time. Okay, after we pick Mage Armor, we got two left. Now maybe we could do Magic Missile, but we would only have like one preparation of that. It's more useful if you're a sorcerer. I'd like something that's a little more useful. What does this do? Plus one resistance? No thanks. Well, sleep is pretty useful as a spell at lower levels. Especially if you're mobbed by a whole bunch of enemies. So I think we'll pick that one. That leaves us with one spell left. And I think we should get a true offensive spell. We could get this Grease spell and it would be like Sleep a little bit. Although I think it would be weaker. Although, even if you do save, you're still slowed by it. In the area of effect, that is. See, that only does one enemy. What about Burning Hands? I'm thinking we could do Burning Hands. I mean, is there anything else here? I'm not really seeing anything besides Summon Creature that would be re even remotely useful. Something that we can cast onto our arrows, maybe? See, Burning Hands does the spell into a cone. I mean, it'll, it's only going to do 1d4 points of fire damage. 
but... I mean, why not? Yeah, okay, those are our five spells. And it says here that we're going to be taking a beetle. What do these other things, these other familiars do? They give plus two or plus three to either skill checks or saves. The beetle, it says it gives you plus one hit points per level. That's probably why they picked it. So let's randomly choose a name. Marmara. Zagoth. That's a winner right there. Let's pick that one. Alright, and we have enough points for a third level, which will be another rogue level. Let's see here, this is weird. For skills, it's saying that we would have like 14 points to play with when on the screen here I'm saying we only have 10. It says to give like plus two points to disable, hide, move silently, and open lock. But we don't have that many points to play with if we gave plus one to all the others. You know what, we might as well just do it anyway. Just what it says until we run out of skill points, which we've done already, so we're not going to be putting any points into search, sleight of hand, tumble, or use a magic device. I wonder if the person who made this build recognized that. Very strange. And for the feat, it says we're going to pick dodge. We get evasion for being a second level rogue, and now we have uh, another level to gain, so we're going to pick our third rogue level. It says to improve dex, so that, now that's 21. Okay, now it says to increase everything by one point. Well, we do have enough skill points for that. So let's bump everything up. So, according to this, disable, hide, move silently, and open lock will be seven. And then this will be modified. Search, slide of hand, tumble, use a magic device will be five. I'm still kind of mystified by that. Also, why they didn't recommend any skill points for the second level. Okay, and our sneak attack is plus 2d6, and our trap sense was increased by 1. And for level 5, we pick our fourth rogue level. And once again, we improve our skills the same way. According to this, we are going to get Uncanny Dodge. What did I miss? I missed something. Was it that sleight of hand? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. Alright, our 6th level will be our 5th rogue level. We're going to get another sneak attack, so our sneak attack will be plus 3d6. For skills, it says improve everything that we've been improving by 1 point. And we have another feat, and it says here to choose mobility. I wonder why it has us choose mobility. Are we going to get, like, whirlwind attack or something later? No, but it, it does have epic dodge level 30, which we are not going to get. 
wonderful. Okay, for level 7, it's going to be our 6th level of Rogue. For skills, we're to bump everything up one point again. We're going to get Trap Sense plus 2. Okay, for level 8, it says to pick Shadow Dancer. And we're going to get Hide in Plain Sight from that. So that's why we only need one level. So whenever we go into Stealth Mode, even if we're being directly observed, our Hide Check will be opposed by the enemy's Spot Check. And if we win, then we'll be pretty much invisible. So it's a good way to make yourself invisible during battle. And we're going to improve the decks again. In fact, I think we're going to be improving decks at all multiples of four levels. As far as we can get. And we're to improve Diplomacy, Hide, Move Silently, Open Lock, Search, Sleight of Hand, and Tumble. Well, that would leave us with a couple of more skill points. So where are we going to put these? I mean, we could put them into, into open lock. That would cost two skill points, and that will bump it up to 11. I think we're just going to go with that. And we get the hide in plain sight. And that's all the levels that we're going to be leveling up. Alright, now I think the guy said something about a chest. So let's look for a chest around here. There's one right there. We can't open that one. Ah, here's the chest. And there's a bunch of things. So let's take them all. Go into our inventory. Looks like we got some traps, even though we didn't put set trap as one of our skills. We got this domino mask. Okay, does this thing give us any any powers? No. So we're not gonna even we're not gonna wear this thing if it doesn't do anything for us. And we have a short sword plus one, leather armor plus one. Let's equip that. Short bow. Actually, we want to equip the short bow, and then we'll have our quiver of arrows. See, we got two short swords plus one. I guess that's if we decided to do two up in fighting, which usually I like to do, but not in this case. And I guess here's the door. And we can go into stealth mode. All right. So before we move on. We're going to call it an episode and save the game. This is Big Los signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And Tango Umbadia.